Today we're at White Lake Wetlands Conservation Area celebrating the arrival of the whooping crane back to southwest Louisiana. Historically, the uh, whooping crane resided here in the marshes around White Lake. White Lake's a 70,000 acre wetland complex managed by the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Ten whooping cranes were delivered to Jennings Airport from uh, Patuxent National Wildlife Research Center in Laurel, Maryland. Uh, it was a historic day for uh, co conservation in Louisiana. The birds were transported from Jennings down to White Lake, put on boats, and uh, taken out to uh, our release site. We have a nice uh, wetlands complex here at White Lake. The birds were placed in a uh, pen that was specially built for them. The pen is 1.5 acres in size. That is the total overall dimensions. Within that pen, we have a 70-foot radius covered pen. And the, the pen is predator-proof. We have uh, electric uh, fencing around the pen to keep out predators. The birds will be kept in the covered pen for approximately two weeks, about the 1st of March. They will be let out of the covered pen into the open 1.5 acre pen. And what we want to do is encourage the birds to roost, to sleep in the open pen at night. That way uh, they'll be uh, able to live without any uh, predators bothering them. It's really interesting how these birds are raised. The birds were raised at Patuxent and they were costume reared. So they haven't had any interaction with humans. Whooping cranes will, will bond to uh, humans pretty quickly, and we don't, we don't want that. We don't want a tame bird. And by raising them with costumes, they think that, that the, the person uh, doing the husbandry work is a crane. Our goal when we breed cranes for release in captivity is to produce birds that are as wild as possible. And by wild, we mean birds that are not comfortable around human beings. We want them to, to stay away from humans when we release them. We want them to go out and find remote and inaccessible habitats. So <clears throat> when we're raising these chicks, uh, and we do all this chick raising by hand, the, the handlers wear a, a great big long sheet that covers their form. Uh, we call it a crane costume. They wear a, a hat that completely covers their head. And then in one hand they have a puppet, which looks like a crane head. With that puppet, we teach the young chicks how to eat, how to drink, and they follow. They, they learn to follow the, the costumed handler um, when they get exercise and, and when they swim and, and that kind of thing. There's no talking by the human handlers around the chicks. We have we try and keep all human uh, noises and activities away from these chicks. There's no uh, driving. Uh, we we are very quiet and entirely to toward the goal of, of um, producing a chick that's not comfortable around any human activity. Hoopers are, are marsh birds, essentially. Wet, wet grass, marsh, wet prairie and marsh birds. Obviously, in Louisiana, there's a lot of marshland, especially in southwestern Louisiana, in the Chenier Plain country. Uh, the the uh, habitats around here appear to be very productive of foodstuffs, lots of crawfish, lots of fish and frogs and snakes and such, all of which are good food items for the whooping crane. And the other very important part of aspect of the habitat here in Louisiana is it's quite remote. Uh, these birds are large birds. They stand about five feet high. They have quite large territories, breeding territories, and even larger, they range even larger to feed. So the extent of the habitat here in Louisiana is another very, very uh, positive aspect of, of this reintroduction. This whole thing is just nothing but partnerships. Um, it starts with the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries being eager to accept birds, having an area that they can manage, wanting to monitor the population and make sure they do well, which is a huge commitment of time and resources and uh, just being so proud to be able to do it. Um, Another huge partner is USGS, U.S. Geological Survey in Maryland, Patuxent, Maryland. That's where all these um, whooping cranes were captive reared that are going to be reintroduced. 
At least one of the eggs that is released today was reared at Audubon Species Survival Center in New Orleans. So there's a lot of zoos involved that helped um, get these, hatch these eggs and then provided them for captive rearing. Our office, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which we are the, we, it's our responsibility to oversee the recovery of endangered species. Every endangered species has a, an office lead. And so what we did is help work with the recovery team to identify and make sure this was a priority, make sure all the paperwork's in place for the rule. So, and I'm sure I've left out a bunch of people, but it's more people than you can count that help get the cranes here. We're all very excited. This is a, a, a big momentous day. It's uh, truly a gift to the people of Southwest Louisiana to get this bird back in our repertoire of, of wildlife resources. And it, cranes all around the world uh, need coastal wetlands. And we have some of the best, finest, largest expanse of coastal wetlands in, in the world. And it's a shame that we have, have had this void period without our cranes. Well, we're getting our cranes back. And so the people who come here to visit this area, as well as the residents of this area, I hope they can enjoy these cranes uh, in, in the native habitat. It's a sense of pride that the team that we've assembled and the staff who have worked so well with our cooperators have worked so hard to be able to get to this moment and the challenges that lie ahead. But I'd have to say that, that, that the staff in coastal non-game resources, the biologists, the technicians, the maintenance people that built the pens, all the logistics, uh, here at White Lake, uh, it's just been tremendous, wonderful team effort. And certainly we could not have done it without support by managers and conservationists and other uh, federal and, and other state agencies. And, and so uh, USGS, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we thank them for their assistance. All the private individuals, uh, the ladies of the cranes, all of our fundraising people, uh, it's just been a tremendous amount of support from NGOs, user groups of the Audubon Society and the Wildlife Federation folks. So it's really, it, it takes a lot. And, and we're just beginning. We're gonna need the energy companies. We're gonna need corporate sponsors. So this is, a, this is a project that we think just about anybody can get behind. It's a good news story. We're happy to have it. And I'm, and I'm proud to just be part of the team that's helped deliver that. Well, of course, the whooping crane is the most endangered crane in the world. And um, it's a signal to a lot of folks that it's, um, there's clear recognition of how good the department is in managing the wild creatures of this state. When you combine the fact that we've brought back the brown pelican and the uh, alligator and the eagle in Louisiana, and now to have the opportunity to have the whooping crane back, it's a tribute to all the biologists and folks in the department who have worked for generations to just make this a fantastic game and bird management organization.